Welcome, welcome, and welcome. Welcome to another episode of Gamecocks Talk with Captain Will. I am your man. I'm your man, Captain Will. Make sure you like, make sure you share, make sure you subscribe to Gamecocks Talk with Captain Will so I can continue to bring you that gospel of Gamecocks every single day. Every single day, y'all. Every single day. Um, I want to thank all the new the day ones. I want to thank everyone who's been rocking me since the beginning. I want to thank all the new folks who've been tuning in. The numbers are going crazy. I love it. I love it. I love it. Um, appreciate it. Again, if you want to become a member to Gamecock Talk with Captain Will, just go to my YouTube page, follow the instructions, hit join, and you will be a part of the team. Follow me on Twitter at Gamecocks Talk. Follow me on Instagram at Gamecocks Talk with Captain Will. And uh, subscribe wherever you get your podcast from. Apple, Spotify, any of those cool ways to get your dose of Captain Will. We got a good one today, y'all. I said we got a good one today, y'all. We're talking about three things to work on, three things to, to tune up after the Memphis game. I'll be doing this after a couple of days after the rewatch, a couple of days after the latest soak in and let it marinate into my brain and, and, and actually have a, a clean slate. Cause you know, after th those, uh, those reactions after a, uh, a victory, it's kind of euphoric, you know, you know, it's, it's like, Oh, everything is euphoric. This is the best thing. Blah, blah, blah. So I just got to let it, let it marinate for a couple of days, let it simmer in a slow cooker a little bit and talk about, what went right, which we're going to talk about tomorrow, and what went wrong, which we're talking about today. First off, first off, um, what do you learn after beating a team 106 to 63 in a exhibition win? What 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 is learn? What is learn? What is is what can you take away from a victory such as that? What can you put in your toolkit and say, hey, we need to work on this right here? Well, with the South Carolina Gamecocks, a three-time, three-time, three-time champion, you have to find something in the greatness. You have to find something to, to, to catch the attention of the young ladies and keep them on their toes. So you have an exhibition win. I, I, hate that. I hate saying exhibition win. I, I don't like that because Memphis, if, if, if Memphis would have beat South Carolina, Memphis would still be in a parade outside. There'd be, it'd be happy days. It'd be Super Bowl all over in Memphis, Tennessee. But they didn't. A win is a win. I don't care who you play. When we play Clayton State on October 28th, the division team or not, I can care less how we beat the snot out of them. How we score 200 points. I want to score ran up because that don't, you, their opportunity is their chance. Is their they have to stop you from scoring? We don't slow down. We play our offense. We play our defense, and and, and count the, the the points at the end of the game. I don't want nothing to change. Nothing to change. But in this game, something a little different about this Carolina team. Something was a little something a little, 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 little different about this year. And then, and, and when you when I say something was different. I have to start with the defense because I'm a defensive guy. I love defense. I love it. I love it. I love it. And when we are discussing the defense from last season compared to this season, it, it's, it's different. Okay. It's already different. You, 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 last season, Gamecocks held opponents to 32% for the season. Okay. Field goal percentage in terms of defense allowed was eighth in the country. Against Memphis, it was 35%. Now, there's not much of a difference between 32%, 35%. What is the difference is Memphis is a middle-of-the-pack team. And 35% is too high by my standards. Okay? Last season, in terms of in terms of three-point shooting, South Carolina gave up 27% from the three-point line. Against Memphis, that number was 
9%. That's way too much against a Carolina defense. Way too much. That's not what we do. Last season, and this stat is so, I don't even know why I'm saying it, but it's so weird. It's so subjective. But Carolina gave up 57 points a game. And then against Memphis, it was 63 points per game. I mean, that's that, that's that. Because because you you talk about the 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 the, the strength of schedule, so and, and and you're talking about the the best and the best uh, because it's taken it's taken into account of all the games that we play. So we play some exceptional teams in the tournament, in the SEC tournament, in the NCAA tournament, exceptional teams, and we play some teams that weren't very good, and you just roll it up. But that's that's enough. I, I don't even I, I'm never gonna talk about that set again. I don't, I don't care about no the points given up. That's 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 garbage to me. I don't, I don't care about that. I'm more about a percentage guy. And if you're giving up 35%, you're giving up 39% at the three, I don't like those numbers against Memphis. So with that being said, Gamecocks got to fine-tune some things. We have to fine-tune some things before we play Michigan in Las Vegas, November the 4th. It is happening soon. It is happening soon. Uh, uh. Flights are booked. Hotels are, are, are ready to receive. Gambling is ready to happen. Adult beverages are ready to be drank. Celebrations are ready to go down. Or the big game in Las Vegas. Uh, communication. Communication has to improve. For this basketball team, defensively, there was a couple of uh, y'all remember that that that, that meme, two Spider Mans. I'm pointing at you, you point at me. That that was a couple of times last night, last night against Memphis. It was, and, and, and which led to too many open looks during this basketball game. That has to change, but it will change. I, I'm confident in that because again, used to players and you and Don was subbing in. A lot in this basketball game. Fagan got in early foul trouble. Dada got in early foul trouble. Everybody played. Uh, with the exception, of course, of uh, Maddie, who we'll talk about later. But it was a lot of different moving pieces, which led to some, in my opinion, some communication errors. Continuity, continuity of players will get better. I'm not concerned about that, but that's something to, just to watch. Another thing is this defense is worse without Camila Cardoza and Ashton Watkins. And that's not a surprise. I, you, you, you just don't find um, those type of players and, and and just plug and play. That's 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 not going to happen that way. Camilo Cardoza was a fourth ranked player in terms of defense in the country, and is in the W. Ashton Watkins was the number one ranked player in terms of defense, and she is suspended from the team. So you take out the two best post players defensively. You take out the two best post players in the country. You two of the best defensive players in the country, and things going to be different. Things gonna be different. It, it it just makes common sense. Um, rim protection is missed for this basketball team without Watkins. It is missed. It, it, it you you saw it during this game, and it's going to be different. This defense will be different. Without Watkins, I have, however long she's going to be suspended from this basketball team. But the defense will be different, but the offense is straight up nasty. So if we go from top number one in defensive rating while Watkins is gone, because a lot of things going to be figured out and, and, and told and, and explained and, and, and shown when we play against Memphis. Memphis. When we play against Michigan. So you got Memphis, you got Michigan. There's too many M's. You'll find out some things when we play in Vegas. 
But we would really find out against North Carolina State up here in Charlotte. That's when we really will see what type of defense this basketball team is. Now, Don already said during this game, you know, it, it was some, uh, what is, what's the term? Liberal, liberal uh, game planning. This is minimum, minimum game planning. So, it, it, but regardless of that fact, if it's minimal, minimal game planning or a whole lot of game plan, this team is different without Ashton Watkins on this basketball team defensively. So, the best lineup, in my humble opinion, with Ashton Watkins, sideline, and, and, and defensively is Raven Johnson, Powell, Tessa, Chloe, and Adele. And you may ask, why, can, why would I say Adele – even though she played was what, what six minutes, seven minutes again in the game versus Memphis. I say that because it's right here. Adele Tack is six foot five. And when I say she's six foot five, because you have several players in the country who are six foot five. Adele Tack is a big six foot five. Adele Tack wants to be in the post. Adele Tack wants to rebound the basketball. She wants to block shots. She wants to intimidate. She wants to be that enforcer for this basketball team. You saw how she ran up and down the court. I mean, it was like a uh, like a hundred meter sprint. She's fast. She's strong. She's mobile. She's over that injury. She's ready. And I think with increased minutes, she could be a excellent defender. Don is already compare her to her great post players. From the past, and Don just don't go out and saying no crazy stuff like that. Like if it's true, it's true. When she he said before the season began last year, when saying that uh, 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 um, Malaysia Fullwiler was a generational player, that proved to be true. That proved to be true for the ones who didn't even know who Malaysia Fullwiler is. Don said that you know months prior to the season beginning. So if Don Staley is saying that Adele Tack is has similarities to her previous post superstar post players then we can I'm 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 signing up I'm signing up and, and Raven of course the best perimeter defender in the SEC Powell who y'all saw it defense has improved more her fitness is un unbelievable Chloe is Chloe is the second best post defender on this basketball team, especially with Watkins out. Okay. And then you got a deal. Now the best lineup for this basketball team with, and I say again, with, with Watkins is Raven. It's Powell. It's Watkins. It's Chloe. And full Wiley. Like, Cap, why are you saying full Wiley? I'm saying full Wiley because full Wiley is an excellent defender on the perimeter. And this five, this five right here, it, it, in my opinion, is the, 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 the glue that will take us, you know, far this year in terms of defense in terms of defense but the lineups are fluid they are so fluid don said they're fluid you can have different teams when they play different teams the lineup's going to be changed and we're going to put you know this person that person but fluid or not <clears throat> fluid or not um in every basketball game this season barring injury pow pow, pow and raven johnson We'll start every game. Let's let's be clear about that. Those two are locks to start every game. There ain't nobody else who's going to start for the South Carolina women's basketball team than Raven and Pop. Okay, let's move on for that. All the rest of the positions might be fluid, are fluid, and it might depend on matchups. So 
If we're talking about Powell and Raven, done, over, the closest one, and this is this is without this is without you know uh Watkins being here. The closest one to a lock is Chloe. That's the closest one. And then we can pick and choose who, who fills those other two spots. You know, might be situational. Might be we need a, a defensive presence uh, more so than in, in, in other teams. It, it's going to be different. The team that we 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 start in Michigan might be different than the team that starts against North Carolina State. You know, it, 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 it's so fluid with that situation. And it just brings so much uncertainty. <clears throat> Excuse me. It brings so much uncertainty with Watkins out. Because we don't know. So it's hard to game plan. And not only is she out, how long will it take for her to get back to being herself? Okay. Before the season started, I said that the starting lineup was going to be Raven, Powell, Breezy, Chloe, and Fagan. That's before the season started. Um, with a caveat. Now, this is the caveat. The caveat that I said, this is probably like in June or July. The caveat that I said was potentially for Wiley to be in the starting lineup and replace Bree. Now, we in the Army, we do an act after action review. I'm, I'm sure in the civilian world, you do something similar. But in the Army, Army in particular, we do a mission, we do an exercise, whatever the case may be. We always do an after action review to go over what went right, what went wrong, what we can approve on, who screwed up, who did amazing, all those different things to make the mission more smoother later. So after every game, after every game, Captain Will is going to talk about those things. After every game, I'm going to make an assessment of who I believe. This might not be what you believe. This might not be what your homegirl believe. This might not be what coaches believe. But it's what I believe should be the starting lineup, and it's going to be fluid. I'm going to change my mind. Just got to let you know. But after one game, after one game, the best starting lineup for this basketball team to play against Clayton State, and I got I mean, I just got to say Clayton State because they're the next opponent. I could say Michigan, but we know we're just not going to skip over Clayton State. Is Raven Johnson, is Pow Pow, is Tessa, Chloe and Joyce. That's who I believe should start against Clayton State. I believe that. If Tessa Johnson continues to be tournament Tessa, she is a top four player on this basketball team. Top four. Tessa was unbelievable. In the tournament, she was unbelievable. She did things on the basketball court for the South Carolina Gamecocks as a freshman, a true freshman. Made the all-tournament team in the tournament. Tournament Tessa was a name. You can make a, a a statement. You can make a you can make a situation where during the last couple games of the tournament, Tessa Johnson was the best player on the court. We can uh, we can we can say that some folks can say it with a chest that, that Tessa was her. Okay, so if Tessa continues to be her and gets the minutes that she got during the NCAA tournament, ladies and gentlemen, let's have some revisionist history. Let's have some fun with that because folks are gonna say, oh, oh no, this person or that person. I'm just trying to just think about tournament Tessa. I know it's been a little while, but Tessa averaged 25 minutes per basketball game. And if Tessa Johnson was getting 25 minutes per basketball game, that means some other folks was not getting those minutes. 25 minutes per basketball game. She averaged 12 points, two rebounds, one assist, less than one turnover per basketball game. She shot 41% from the field. She shot 43% from three. She shot 92% from the free throw line. While playing 
exceptional defense. Tessa, this vo- this version of Tessa Johnson can't be off the court. She has to have minutes. We're not going to see that situation early in last year. She's playing five, six minutes. No, 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 no. That's not going to happen for this season. She's earned the opportunity to get more minutes. She proved that in the SEC tournament. She proved that in the NCAA tournament. And in, in terms of Joyce, Joyce Edwards is just different. She's different. When 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 uh, the clip, the the the, the interview where, where, where Breezy and and, 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 and um Pow Pow was talking about Joyce, they would say, "You oh, you gonna love Joyce. You are going to love." Joyce Edwards. They call it crash out. And I see why. Joyce is all over the court, offensively and defensively. The number three ranked recruit in the country, uh, by, rated by ESPN, will prove, will show that ESPN was wrong and Captain Will was right. She is the number one ranked player in this class. She is a offensive rebounder. She is a player that can finish at the rim. She attacks the basket. She boxes out. She does the little things. She's strong. She's athletic. She's big. She can hit her free throws. She can hit the mid-range jumper. And yes, she can step out and hit a three. Joyce Edwards is different for the South Carolina Gamecocks. And if she continues to play, if she had, if, if what we saw against Memphis was a sample size of how great this young lady is, you talk about top four, top five player on this basketball team. You cannot sit Joyce Edwards on the bench. That's with Ashton Watkins or without Ashton Watkins. She has to play. When she came into the game versus Memphis, the the the, the mood changed. Business just picked up, and it, it very it's sim- it's very similar to what it was like with with, with, with Malaysia for Wally last season. Business picked up when she came onto the court. She is special, and having players like a a full Wally and and Joyce and Watkins, it, it's just so awesome, awesome for South Carolinians, South Kakalaki folks. Our own playing like this, our own being some some of the best in the country is so amazing. And Cap, because I, I know folks gonna hit me in the mentions like Cap, yo, 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 yo where, where's Full Wild? Yo, I'm, I'm gonna be like this. I'm gonna keep it real with y'all. I, I, Full Wild, and I said this in the last show, I believe. Full Wild is in the middle. She's like in, 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 in call it the middle between yo, I'm gonna be sensational. I'm gonna cr- make the crowd roar. I'm going to do what I've been doing since birth, or I'm going to be a traditional point guard. She's caught in the middle. She's trying to figure it out. And I'm just saying right this right here. This is this is my my take on that. Full Wild is not a point guard. Full Wild is not a point guard. She is a shooting guard. Let her do what she can do. She's not a point guard. Put Full Wiley off guard like she plays uh, most of the time, but I, sometimes she runs offense. I don't want Full Wiley running my offense. I want Full Wiley off on the wing, striking fear in every opponent that tries to guard her. Everyone. Every opponent, because Malaysia Full Wiley is the best one-on-one player in the country, and it's nothing more than seeing the fear of an opponent who has to guard her one-on-one. <coughs> it's nothing. It's nothing. Let her do what she does best, and that is light. Somebody up. Light her up. Light her up. This game, she had 16 minutes, four turnovers. That's way too many turnovers because I believe she's thinking too much. I believe she's in her head. Full Wally 
is college basketball version of, 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 of AI. One of my favorite players in the history of basketball, male, female, AI was one of my favorite players. And AI was unbelievable. But AI was not a point guard. Georgetown tried to make him into a point guard. Philadelphia 76ers tried to make him to a point guard. No, 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 no. No, no, no. Don't, don't put the, don't, don't try to harness that injury. She is a shooting guard and let her shoot. She's a, a phenomenal player. A phenomenal player. And also one thing to remember, one thing to remember, the second best point guard in the country in the class of 2024 hasn't played yet for South Carolina. She didn't play against Memphis. And we're talking about Maddie Medan. And some folks are already starting to, to, to uh, miss her, starting to forget about her. No, no, not much fanfare when we're talking about a Maddie McDan, the 14th ranked player in the country, second ranked post guard, po point guard in the country. Nobody talking about her. I've been talking about Maddie for a year, over a year. What month is this? October? I've been talking about Maddie McDan for over a year and how sensational she is. Do not forget about Maddie McDaniel. Manny McDaniel is a point guard. Manny McDaniel is the future point guard for this basketball team. We hear a whole lot of stuff about you know, Aaliyah Chavez and, 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 and whomever who has not committed yet. I can care less. If Aaliyah Chavez signs, comes here or, or don't show up, I, I don't care. It, it makes no difference to me. It's never, no, never mind to me because Manny McDaniel is her. Okay, it, it doesn't matter to me. When, 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 with you, with Manny McDaniel, you have a true point guard to back up Raven Johnson and Tahina Pow Pow. True. I want to see, and like I said, this is Captain Will. I want to see sometime this season, early in the season. I want to see when 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 Raven comes off the the court. I want to see Maddie go in. Okay, when Pow Pow comes off the court, I want to see Full Wally go in. I want to see Maddie and Full Wally running the show on the ones and twos. That's what I want to see because that's the future. Raven has has, has, has raised up the M, the mock draft. She's right now top ten. They have Tahina Pow Pow number nine, Raven Johnson number ten. If her stock continues to rise, which I know it's going to rise, Don Staley wants her to shoot the ball a little bit more. She's already the best pass first point guard in the country. We can have a conversation about some of these other quote unquote point guards that's actually posing as shooting guards. We can have that conversation another time. But she's the best pass first defensive point guard in this draft. That is why she's number 10 ranked in the draft for the ones who don't know. She legitimately would change a basketball team in the WNBA with her defense and a pass first ability. What do you think Raven Johnson will look like playing for the Chicago sky this year? Amazing. Amazing. Because she don't turn the ball over. And, 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 and she makes amazing passes and she can lead an offense because she was coached by Don State. But I digress. I digress. The future is Maddie and full Wally at the one and two. And I want to see it. I hope I see it at Clayton State. I hope I see it. A lot of questions. A lot of answers. None of those questions or answers are going to happen on October 28th. No, 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 make no mistake about it. We're probably going to win by 100 points. Make no mistake about that. But the first quiz is against Michigan. That's the first quiz. The first test is against North Carolina State. The final exam, November 24th versus UCLA, in UCLA. We would know a whole lot about this basketball team during the month of November. I am confident. I am confident. I believe this team is better than last year. Maybe not as good defensively. Maybe. Instead of number one, we might be top seven, top ten. But offensively? Good luck trying to stop this basketball team. Good luck. It is a monster. And with that being said, 
This concludes another episode of Gamecocks Talk with Captain Will. I am your man, Captain Will. Make sure you like, make sure you share, make sure that you subscribe to Gamecocks Talk with Captain Will so I can continue to bring you that gospel of Gamecocks every single day. Ladies and gentlemen, you're now rocking with the best. And since you're rocking with the best, come rock with your man, Captain Will. Let's go.